Russia threatens to destroy F-16s for Ukraine at European airfields. Russian politicians began to threaten strikes on European airfields where the F-16s transferred to Ukraine will be based. Chairman of the State Duma Committee on Defense Andriy Kartapolov said that if the F-16s participate in combat sorties, they are a legitimate target for the Russian armed forces, including the airfields on which they are based. Kartapolov noted that if the planes remain at the airfields as in storage from where they will be transported to Ukraine, where they are equipped, maintenance is carried out and they start flying from Ukrainian airfields, then in this case, there are no complaints against former partners. But if they take off from the airfields of some country, enter the airspace of Ukraine, launch missiles and return there, then this is a legitimate goal. As for the possibility to shoot down, we can shoot down anyone and anywhere, stressed the deputy. Earlier, Sahi Golubtsov, chief of aviation of the Air Force Command of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, said that Ukraine will place part of its F-16 fighter jets at air bases abroad. This will protect the fighter jets from Russian strikes and Ukrainian pilots will also train on them. There is a number that will go to Ukraine. There are a certain number of aircraft that will be stored at secure air bases outside of Ukraine so that they are not targeted here, said Golubtsov. Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway have committed to providing Ukraine with more than 60 multi-purpose fighter aircraft, but it could take several years before all are delivered. The first of the aircraft are expected to be delivered later this year and Ukrainian pilots are currently undergoing training by Western allies to fly the warplanes. The planes that are held back will remain in those centers where our pilots and aviation personnel are trained. Golubtsov continued, this will be our reserve in case of need for replacement of faulty planes during routine maintenance. Ukrainian pilots have been impressed with the aircraft, the official said, noting they have been able to detect drones and other aircraft which can be targeted with the air-to-air -air missiles on board, complementing the F-16's air-to-ground assault capabilities. German leader is a rotten liverwurst and he must ask for forgiveness from Ukrainians. Medvedev German Chancellor Olaf Scholz must ask for forgiveness from Ukrainians for playing a role in plunging their country into misery and helping to revive Nazi ideology, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has said. Writing on Telegram, Medvedev, who now serves as Deputy Chairman of the Security Council of Russia, lashed out at Scholz, who argued that President Vladimir Putin must finally realize that Ukraine is strong and will not be forced to its knees or forced to surrender. He went on to say that there can only be a just peace for Ukraine, adding that working for peace does not mean simply raising the white flag while reiterating Berlin's commitment to supporting Kiev. In response, Medvedev called Scholz a rotten liverwurst, who he said unexpectedly became chatty and talked outright drivel. The former president claimed that Ukraine has become a kind of dominion directly controlled by the United States and NATO countries, adding that Kiev is fully on the Western payroll and is receiving all kinds of the most lethal weapons despite the protests of its own people. So where does this strength come from? Sausage maker? From exuberant corruption which is completely out of control? From the wholesale theft of this aid by the Zelensky clique? Or from a dying people, half of whom live in Russia and Europe? Medvedev asked. Scholz should get down on his knees and repent before the Ukrainians for lying to them that they could achieve victory against Russia and for dooming them to the slaughter while sacrificing the well-being of the Germans, according to the former president. The German chancellor should also take responsibility for the revival of Nazism in Ukraine, his own indescribable mediocrity of management and the loss of public confidence in his social democratic party, which makes his predecessors Willy Brandt and Helmut Schmidt turn over in their graves many times over. Medvedev said, the former Ukrainian ambassador to Germany Andriy Melnik once called Scholz offended liverwurst. In 2022, the envoy said the chancellor was behaving not very statement-like after he refused to visit Kiev following Ukraine's criticism of President Frank Walter Steinmeier. Melnik was sacked following the remarks. China, Russia, Iran, 
started a hybrid war against NATO, the alliance is facing serious threats. According to Western analysts and journalists of The Telegraph, the Third World War has already begun, but it is taking place in an unusual way. The publication notes that China, Russia, Iran, Turkey and Qatar started a war against NATO countries due to the spread of their own influence and disinformation. According to journalist Andrew Fox, for the first time since the end of the Second World War, a number of countries have united to redistribute the world. In particular, Fox notes that China is seeking dominance in the Pacific region and seeks to gain access to resources in Africa and Asia. Russia wants to regain control over the countries of the former USSR. Iran seeks to get rid of the influence of the US and its Western allies in the Middle East. Turkey and Qatar strive for dominance among the countries of the Arab world. Instead of armed war, we see intense strategic competition. No country can compete with the US and NATO on the battlefield, so instead our enemies are trying to defeat us by economic and cultural means without firing a single shot, notes Fox. He emphasized that the NATO opponents of the NATO countries had been preparing for a confrontation for a long time. In particular, China extended its influence to more than 140 countries around the world through investments and in this way tried to establish control over 75% of the inhabitants of the planet. At the same time, Russia tried to undermine the unity of its Western partners by trying to influence elections in the United States, trying to divide political circles in Great Britain and driving European countries into dependence on their own gas supplies. Currently, Moscow is trying to undermine its opponents and destabilize pro-Western support in the Balkans and Central and Eastern Europe. Putin resorted to direct armed aggression against Georgia and Ukraine. In the criminal war launched by Russia against Ukraine, the Kremlin dictator is trying to demonstrate that he can wage a long and exhausting war. Meanwhile, Iran took advantage of the chaos in the Middle East to establish regional hegemony after the 2003 Iraq war. Tehran has created powerful and violent proxies in Yemen, Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Ukraine and Israel give us a sense of the currents of influence operation that will overwhelm us if the situation escalates into an armed war. For more than a decade, our enemies have been using leverage, silenced weapons to fire the first shots in global conflict and we're only now noticing it. With all eyes on Normandy, the Third World War is closer than we think. We are already fighting it, emphasizes Andrew Fox.